that is one good looking machine isn't it and it looks a lot different than when it came to the workshop um, if you follow me on Facebook you would have seen those pictures posted of Sandra's 301A the bed was really gnarly um, it had uh, a number of scratches it had um, just all kinds of aesthetic issues going on which was really a shame because otherwise it's a pretty strikingly beautiful uh, machine it's got that nice extension bed like uh, a featherweight and that's why I always refer to this machine as the big sister to the featherweight because it's got all those same attributes it uses the same bobbin carrier you have to do the same thing as far as the setup of it with making sure the flat side of that needle is to the left and then you have to thread this machine like a featherweight from right to left most machines are always threading from left to right but you have to be dyslexic if you're going to own one of these machines so that you can thread it from right to left all right i've got sandra showing up in just a little bit so this is going to be a fairly short uh premiere i've got to jump right into this we're going to do a couple of different uh uh, sew offs for confirmation. We're going to sew uh, genuine cowhide leather. We're going to sew vegetable tan leather. And of course, we're going to sew U.S. Army grade canvas. I just, I can't do a sew off without sewing that stuff. It's just so spectacular. But first of all, I'll just kind of pan around. Again, did not do a full restoration on Sandra's machine. Uh, ended up using a special debris process uh, and uh, a number of different cleaning agents and then ultimately uh, a clear coat compound to try to bring that luster back to this machine so I'm gonna zoom in right away we don't have a lot of time to uh, to chit chat today uh, things are gonna be moving pretty fast and furious so all right let me get over to the uh, to the machine and we'll jump right into the uh, sew offs okay so Sandra again is a local as I am now in Ocanto um, and I've had a chance to uh, visit with her a couple of times you might remember again that uh, she also owns a featherweight uh, and I had previously uh, serviced a featherweight for her as well that was the one that was really really in trouble uh, because a boyfriend had uh, lubricated the motor with a lubricant that caused it to just basically short out overheat it was a mess but we got it figured out all right so here we go with uh, Sandra's uh, 301a and we're sewing genuine cowhide leather here we go folks I'm taking it slow after I got done with this machine the motor is just so ridiculously strong and again you might remember me covering this in other videos the the uh, 301a does not have a super huge motor it's a uh, 0.54 amps so you know when it comes to heavy duty sewing most people don't think of the 301a as a leather type sewing machine but you just saw it go through uh this genuine cowhide and it made it so ridiculously easy uh, the stitches are absolutely spectacular on this and I'll try to zoom in as well so you can see it but the spacing the formation with this three to four ounces of genuine cowhide is just absolutely uh, spectacular and our lock stitch is just as good I mean it, you can't have one with the out there without the other right so I'm going to set this to the side and then I'll try to zoom in uh, so we can look at this closer I'm going to clip those threads real quick while I'm thinking about it uh, we'll zoom in on it at the end so you can see it up close. I'm going to set it right out here in front. All right, so now we're going to do vegetable tan leather. This again is about four ounces of vegetable tan leather. Again, we're talking about a machine, the big sister to the featherweight, 0.54 amps. Uh, it's going to have a, a motor that obviously is larger than the featherweight. The featherweight is only 0.4 but nonetheless it's not a huge motor we're not talking about a Husqvarna we're not talking about a Foff machine here we're talking about a Singer 301A but you know again once I get done servicing these machines eliminating anything at all that's going to hold it back watch how easy it sews this vegetable tan leather I just love this machine all right here we go once I get my foot on the foot control that is <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
Not to mention, listen to how quiet this machine runs. It's ridiculous. I mean, it just it just runs almost stealth. It's like you get done servicing a machine properly, and it, you know you got all that metal moving, and yet you can't even hear it moving. It's just absolutely ridiculous. All right, so here again we've got vegetable tan leather. It's absolutely spectacular. The stitch formation, uh, the spacing, everything about the integrity of that stitch is absolutely spot on. So I'm going to go ahead and clip these threads and I'm going to, again, can you spin it back after this premiere and listen to how effortless, effortlessly this 301 just got the job done. It's just crazy. I guess it's not crazy. Come on. I, Scott, ha, have a clue, buddy. It was on your workbench. So here, so far we've done genuine cowhide, we've done vegetable tan leather, the stitches in both respects, uh, top stitch and then also lock stitch is just muy bueno. I mean, I wish I knew more Spanish. It's just, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. All right, so now I've got two layers of US Army grade canvas. I'm gonna try to go down, turn, and then come back just because I love the way this particular material presents uh, stitches. There's, there's something magical about U.S. Army grade canvas. Here we go. Two layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. Going a little bit faster this time. I want you to know that this, this machine will go fast if I need it to go fast. All right, let's turn again. We're going down to the home stretch. What do you think? It's crazy, isn't it? Just how phenomenal this machine sounds. Or doesn't sound. You can't even hear it. But you can see it on the camera running, right? I know you can. All right, let me get this thread tucked back. So here again, U.S. Army grade canvas. There's our, there's our top stitch right there. I mean, it doesn't, it just doesn't get any better than that, seriously. And I know pink on green, depending on which angle I have it on, it's a little bit more challenging to see it, possibly. But that is just ridiculous as far as how good looking that stitch is. And the lock stitch, same thing. Those little white tufts. I've got to contact the Army and ask them why. Why do the tufts come out when you sew it? Yeah, they'll probably hang up on me, but oh well, that's fine. At least I made the call, right? All right. <laughs> All right, so here's our U.S. Army grade canvas, our vegetable tan. Well, I'm going to try to keep it still here, folks. It is happy, happy material. It's going all over the place. I'll go leather, leather, and then U.S. Army grade canvas. All right, that's about as good as I can get it. It's kind of, it's kind of fickly today as far as moving around on the workbench. All right, so let me zoom in on this before Sandra gets here. And we can take a look at these stitches a lot closer up, hopefully. And you'll be able to see just how spectacular they are. I really am amazed. And not amazed. So here's our um, vegetable tan leather. It's looking really, really good. A little bit hard to see it on the edge there, but if I zoom in a little bit, I think you can see the, uh, the stitch definition from this angle. There you can really see it once we hit that little plateau going up. And you can see on the side there, again, we're not talking about a garment leather here. You look at it from the side, you can see the nap of that and the thickness of it, probably around four ounces, like I said. And this machine just sewed through it like it was broop, no problem. And here we've got our genuine cowhide leather. I love the look of this stuff too. And there again, you've got just an absolutely perfect stitch. The featherweight isn't the only machine that has bragging rights. You look at this stitch on this genuine cowhide again from the side, you can see that nap and the thickness of it. The number of ounces, easily four ounces. And that stitch is just absolutely perfect. Now we finally go over to our US Army grade canvas. I'm gonna kind of start up on the left side. Again, it doesn't miss a beat. The, the stitch quality, the spacing, the formation is just absolutely 
unbelievably gorgeous. Even where I made my little awkward turn there. I guess it wasn't horribly awkward. Isn't that spectacular? I mean, those stitches. I'm going to go past that leather just one more time, just because I really, really love the look of how it goes through that genuine cowhide and on this uh, vegetable tan leather as well. Very, very impressed. So now we not only have a very pretty looking machine, which I know was part, if I move my lamp, we have a pretty looking machine. <laughs> we not only have a, a, a gorgeous looking machine now, and again, I did not take it through a full restoration. I used a special uh, cleaning uh, agents to go over the paint to try to wick all of the old uh, dead paint off, the oil and everything else. It's not like a full restoration. It's not quite at that level. But if you're not wanting to invest in a complete restor re restoration, this is really the best option to get a great result where, where you know, before your machine really, really wasn't anything spectacular. It really wasn't something that you could feel real confident about taking to a sewing class or a quilting class. Sandra can pull this out of her case now, and she's going to have, she's going to be like John Lennon sewing, basically. They're going to be corralling her in to say, where did you get that? How did you make it look that good? And then she can give them one of my cards and say, go see Scott. <laughs> so, at any rate, it's a great machine. It really is. Um, the Singer 301A, again, was an answer to many, many uh, homemakers' requests that they get a machine that would have more bed space, more harp space, more power. And the answer to that, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit, otherwise I'm going to look like an Oompa Loompa. So the answer to that was for Singer to come out with this 301A. It's going to have some of the same characteristics. So if you're a homemaker and you're used to using your featherweight that you got from the Chicago World's Fair in the 1930s, you don't have to relearn everything. You know which way the flat side of the needle goes in this machine because it's the same as your featherweight. It's going to face to the left. You know how to thread this machine because it's real similar to the featherweight. Plus, going to the, through the needle, you know you have to be dyslexic and you have to thread it from right to left so that a lot of those same attributes that they were so much in love with with the featherweight 221, they were able to receive as well in the 301A plus a lot more workspace, a lot more power than the featherweight. So it really was an incredible demonstration on Singer's part of we're listening to our consumers and we want them to be happy. So we're going to add this new machine, the big sister to the featherweight, and give them the best of both worlds. They can still have their featherweight if they want, but they can also get a 301A. And then if they have bigger quilting projects, if they want more uh, harp space, if they need a little bit more power, they're going to be able to step it up with a 301A and still enjoy a lot of the same benefits that you would from a featherweight. Even the same or similar body style as well. So kudos to Singer for listening, which is uh, uh, really a lesson that a lot of businesses these days could learn in improving their response to customers' needs. Uh, sometimes they just do what they want to do and we're supposed to adapt to them. Well, Singer was pretty smart back in the day when they rolled these out, a lot of them rolled out in the 50s uh, because this was exactly what those sewers that were using this machine, sometimes to make extra money and to make ends meet, uh, this is exactly what they needed. So I better wrap this up because Sandra is going to be here at the workshop in a matter of minutes. Uh, it's, it's getting real close to the time that she's supposed to arrive. Plus, I have a number of my quilting friends from this new quilting circuit that I've met that are here to pick up their newer machines that you as well have seen. A lot of pictures posted of them on Facebook as well. So again, if you are 
really gun shy in a sense of Facebook. If yeah, I don't want to do the Facebook thing, reconsider because you miss a lot. You really do. You miss a lot of what I do with vintage sewing machines and also more contemporary machines on uh, on these workbenches in my workshop. So consider it. Open up an account. Don't make friends with anybody. Just open up account an account so you can connect to my Facebook business page, Cow Country Vintage Sewing Machines and Restoration, and then you won't you'll be able to capture the full picture of what I'm doing. Okay, all right, just a little nudge there, a little nudge. So, all right, again, as always, we're getting so close to 5,000 subscribers. I'm really excited because shortly after that, we're going to be doing another giveaway. I'm not even sure what kind of giveaway I'm going to do this time. Maybe I'll offer to do something just totally outrageous. Uh, I'm not going to dye my hair. Don't don't even ask. All right. <laughs> this is not going to happen. All right. So stay tuned for more great videos like this. And again, um, this is a great machine. If you don't if you don't own a 301A yet, I've got one for you. So contact me. All right. God bless you guys.